Hello and welcome to Rain Francis Art. My name is Rain. Today we're doing a little bit of art therapy with our watercolors and we're going to paint this lovely little toucan. So let's begin. This is what you'll need for today's lesson. You're going to need some watercolor paper. I'm actually going to be painting my toucan on a small little visual journal watercolor pad. It's 90 pounds and it's only five and a half by eight. So it's kind of a small one. You can see the size of my hand here. And I've gone ahead and I've, sorry, I don't want it to be crooked for you. I've gone ahead and copied my stencil, transferred my stencil onto my canvas. And in the description below, I will leave a link to the stencil. It's a very simple stencil, but feel free to download it and print it out and transfer it. And I do have a video on how to transfer your, your stencils onto your canvas. As for paints today, I have my pan paints here. The brand is called Pretty Excellent, I think. I say I think every time because I'm not really sure. <laughs> I got these off Amazon, and, but I love these paints. They're very vibrant. I'm going to be sticking mostly to the oranges and yellows. Um, the Toucan's eye is a little purple, and I'm going to be using brown and black today. I have some water, a little bit of water here, and I've got some paper towels. I've got some brushes. They're round brushes, number two and number four round brushes, and I have a number four Line, excuse me, liner brush just in case I need that for detail. I also have some watercolor pencils that I'll be using just to outline the toucan before I start adding some paint to it. Now since this is an art therapy day I thought I would bring out my Bob Ross playing cards <laughs> and I want to see what words of wisdom Bob Ross has for us. On each card it's really cool. There's um, a picture of his painting, one of his paintings, and there's a quote from the show, uh, The Joy of Painting, that he said. So let's see what Bob Ross wants us to know today during our art therapy session here. I am not a licensed art therapist, by the way. This is really just for relaxation and to enjoy painting. Okay, so let's see. Bob Ross wants us to, to know and success with painting leads to success with many things. It carries over into every part of your life. Isn't that true? That is so true. And not only is that true, I read a quote recently that I wrote down and it said, you'll achieve far more personal satisfaction by trying to impress yourself than you will trying to impress someone else. So that's great. Bob Ross is reading my mind today. Success with painting leads to success with many things. It carries over into every part of your life. And I think that goes for other things too. If you're successful in one area of your life, then you're more motivated to, you know, be successful in other areas of your life. I, I truly believe that. All right, so I am going to take out my orange watercolor pencil. Now this is completely um, optional. You don't have to outline it with the watercolor pencil. I'm just going to do it because it's going to make my life easier when I'm trying to figure out the colors that I'm going to use. And maybe you'll see it better too. My lights are extremely bright, but it's really the only way that I can, um, that I can make a, a decent video is to have bright lights. All right. So let me just outline this toucan. And I'll take, um, I'm just going to take my yellow color to do the rest. <sighs> because this part and this part of the toucan and underneath his chest area is all black and he's got some black on his beak, but I don't want to put black, a black watercolor pencil because I don't want it to bleed into anything else around it. Does that make it easier for you to see? 
I'm going to take my purple watercolor pencil and I'm going to outline his eye because his eye is purple. And I have a reference photo in front of me on my computer. You can find this reference photo if you do a search for uh, Toucan. I'm sure you'll find this exact one. I can't show it to you because it's not my property, but I am going to paint it. All right. So, oh, I forgot one little spot here. This area at the edge of his beak. That's going to be all black. There we go. And today we're just having some fun. Honestly, just having some fun. So what I'm going to do is I'm wetting my number four round brush and I'm just going to put some water on the inside of the top of his beak. I'm doing a little wet on wet here. And I'm not necessarily going to put any water into that space there because that's going to be black. But I am putting water inside his beak here. It's, it's kind of a color field of orange and yellowy orange. So I'm going to start with this color here. It's, it's an orangey yellow or a yellowy orange. I'm going to load up my number four brush and I don't suggest that you do this over your canvas. I'm only putting my paint over my canvas because I want you to be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm just applying that orangey yellow inside the beak. It's already a really nice, really nice color. Just adding a little, little bit more water just to make sure I, I can get enough paint on my brush. And I don't mind if some of this goes into that round spot here because like I said, that's gonna be black. We're gonna put layers. So this layer has to dry before we add more. All right. And I'm going to, let's see. Clean off my brush and put a little bit of water in this circle but around the eye. I don't want any water in that purple circle at all. And it's hard for me to see because of the bright lights but I think I did okay. Worst case we can just take it off with a clean brush. So I'm taking that same yellowy orange and I'm going to pop that into that circle. Wet on wet technique. You put water where you want your paint to go and it should stay in that spot. You see, I didn't put any water into that purple circle and there's no paint going in there because the paint will follow the water. Alright, the next orangey area is the bottom of his beak. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just wetting it with the paint on it because we're basically going to be using the same color of paint so I don't need to wipe it off. This is a nice cheerful painting to do on a cold, rainy, windy, windy, windy <laughs> November day. That's what's going on in my weather here. Again, taking that same yellowy orange and I'm going to put that inside the bottom of the beak here. Don't want to lose my line in between, so I'm hoping I'll still be able to see that. I usually paint on large canvases, eight and a half by 11 or nine by 12, but I just felt like doing a small little painting today. I have a lot going on, so I can't spend too much time, but I wanted to at least get a little bit of painting in today. It's important for me. All right, I'm just wiping off my brush here. Alright, what we are going to do is we're going to let this dry and then continue. 
I actually brought out my little hair dryer today so that I could um, dry the layers in between because sometimes it puddles up and it takes a long time and I just want to paint today. So I'm going to take now my smaller round brush. That's a number two round brush and I'm going to wet it and I'm going to put it in the next color, which is a nice orange here. And I've got it quite wet because I'm trying to find transparency. I don't want a solid color. Now on the top of the toucan's beak here, there's an orange stripe and it goes all the way down here. I'm going to take a little water and soften that up a little. Like I said, I want transparency. I don't want a solid stripe. And eventually we're going to add some more color to it so that there is a bit of a color field, meaning like, you know, different shades of the oranges. Maybe we might add a little red to it. And like I said, I don't mind if I get any in this area here because this area is going to be black after. Just want to try to get it looking nice here. Kind of want it to blend down. And I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom here in this area. Taking a little bit of that orange with lots of water. I'm just looking at my reference photo. It's kind of along here. And then along the bottom of the beak. I've got some water and I'm going to soften that up. I'm going to pull some of that off actually. There we go. See how that blends really nicely when you kind of pull it off? And again, this area here is black as well. So is this. So I'm not worried too much about getting orange into that area. Oops. I might have to extend his beak here. There we go. taking a little bit of water and I'm going to soften that up again. I just want to have a nice blend of yellow and orange. Now I've got another orange next to it. I have to be careful because I got a little blue in there. So I'm just going to grab it from the top here. And I'm going to do the same thing, but closer to where the opening of the beak is, right here. And I'm getting that little wet. I'm going to bring it down because the bottom of his beak is darker than the top. All I have on my brush is water right now. There. Nicely blended at the bottom. And I'm going to take that middle orange again. I have a lot of water on my brush. And I'm going to apply some on the beak, but on the top of the opening. Just like that. And I've got some water on my brush. And again, I'm going to pull it up this time just to soften up that edge.
and then maybe pull a little bit off with a clean brush. All right. And I'm just going to keep doing that. I'm going to add layer upon layer upon layer. I might have to stop in between to dry my piece, but just want to make sure that that line is, is visible there because that's where his mouth opens. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work on that eye area. If you don't mind, I'm going to keep my paints off camera. And you know that I'm using yellowy orange, a more orange and a darker orange. I don't know the names of these colors and I'm really sorry about that. So if I say I'm taking my yellowy orange, I mean this one. This is my orange and this is my dark orange. All right, so I'm gonna be working with the dark, the just the orange, the regular orange right now. I want to add some orange to the outside of this eye area. Cleaning off my brush. And I'm going to add a little bit of water to that area to soften it up. I have to be very careful because I don't want to get any of this into that eyeball area. I'm going to clean off my brush again. I have it dipped slightly into water just so that I can blend it. I'm cleaning off my brush and drying it a bit and I'm going to pull some of that paint off. and just wiping my brush in between pulling it off. Because I don't want it to be completely orange. I want it to be orange and yellow. And then I'll blend it. That's nice. I really love using oranges and yellows. I love the warm palette very much. Okay, what shall we do next? Well, let me take a look here. I think this is pretty dry here. So I'm going to add another layer with my number two brush. Let's see, of that yellowy orange. Just in this area here. Right up to the edge. A little water on my brush to soften it and blend it. And I'm going to go right into my regular orange color with a wet brush and add a little bit of that as well to the bottom of the top beak. And again, just adding some water to soften it up just so it's not a big stark band of color. I want to have a little bit of a, a blend there. Maybe a little bit more. And with a clean brush I'm just pulling a little paint off. Just like that so it's nicely blended. I'm losing my voice, so it's nicely blended. <laughs> so it's nicely blended. <laughs> there we go. This is just a quick little painting we're doing today for fun. Now I'm taking a look. This area is dry, so I'm going to work on the little eye there. Now the pupil is black, but the iris is purple. So I'm going to take Right here, the third one from the left is this color purple. That's the one I'm going to use for now. I want to see how that looks. And I'm not putting too much water on my brush because I don't want it to be too wet and bleed into the, um, the orange. 
and I'm still using my number two round brush. And it's quite purple. You know, it's there's no layers, it's very purple. trying to make it round. Okay. While I've got dark on my brush, I'm going to just, I'm not going to clean off my brush, but I'm going to go right into my black and I'm going to fill in that pupil while I have dark on my brush. what his eye looks like in the photo. I'm going to clean off my brush now. Now I'm trying to figure out what I want to do. His chin slash chest area is white, so I might just leave that as is. And the rest of him is black, actually. So maybe I'll just go in and put in some black. Or you know what, I'll start with some brown because I'm looking at the reference photo and this area here in the reference photo is all in the sun. So it is black, but there's a little bit of brown in it. So I'm just gonna go in wet on wet. I've got my number four brush now because it's a little bigger for this size. And I'm just putting all, all of this area, I'm getting it wet with water. You may see a little orange in there because I didn't, I'm not using clean water since it's going to be a dark color. It doesn't matter. Now, I think what I'm going to do is use my darkest brown, which is this one here, the third from the left, this one. That's quite dark. So off camera, I'm just wetting my brush, filling it up with that brown color. I'm just going to tap that in there. And then this one's going to have layers. I might actually put some black in there too. It's very wet. Wetter than I wanted it to be, but I can always take some out. I want to be careful not to get any brown into that orange. I've got a little puddle of water there, so what I'm going to do is dry brush. When I say dry, I mean it's it's wet. <clears throat> Excuse me, I'm losing my voice. I just go like this, and I dry it off as much as possible, and I just soak up the water. I'm going to put more brown on there, and then I just wipe it off and soak up more, okay? Because I really, really don't want puddles of water in there so I don't mind redoing it. That was just way too wet. So maybe instead of the wet on wet, what I'll do is I'm just tapping my brush into the water. I'll put some brown on my brush and directly paint it. Yeah, that's better. I've got a nice dark color here. no pool of water. I have to be careful here around the eye. I'm kind of moving my hand in a weird direction here because I'm, I want you to see what I'm doing. But I don't want to get brown into the eye area. Yeah, I'm just going to get a little more paint add that to the middle. You see our little fella starting to come together? <laughs> We're just having fun today. No realism necessarily. All 
right, I'm going to clean off my number four brush and now I'm going to work on this area back here. And I'm going to take my small number two brush and wet that and it's black. So I'm just going to dip that into my black as is and I'm going to carefully paint that shape. actually held my breath while I was doing that. <laughs> Black is hard to wipe off, so... I'm gonna get a little more black onto my brush here. Just a little bit. After it dries, we'll see if it needs a second layer because this is really, really black, very dark on the toucan. All right, this area here and here, those are both black. So I'm gonna just go ahead and do that too with my number two brush. Being careful not to get it into that eye area. holding my breath. <laughs> do you do that when you're trying to, you're doing something delicate with detail? Do you hold your breath? <sighs> there we go. <laughs> this area down here is black too, but I'm looking at the reference photo. It's not as solid, and I'll show you what I mean. It kind of goes, there's a little white spot behind here, that little spot between the eye area, that's all white. So I'm just doing the outline right now. I'll put a little more black on my brush. And it goes out a little like that. And I'll fill that all in with black. I know I'm talking very softly. I tend to do that when I'm painting. Because I get very, very relaxed. Okay. Now, I'm going to add a lot of water to my brush a lot of water and I'm dipping it gently into the black because I want to put a transparent layer of black on top of the brown and I want to see how that turns out because like I said the um in the photo it does look like it's a little a little bit in the sun so I want some of that brown to show through It's so wonderfully quiet right now. One of my neighbors was building a house this year and once in a while I can hear him hammering, but right now you can hear a pin drop. My pets are asleep and the heater's not on. It's really nice and quiet wonder how long that's going to last. <laughs> All right. While I've got my black out, I'm going to actually put in black for the rest of the body. So just filling it in. And we've got a little bit here that goes up and then down. Do you enjoy the quiet? I mean, it's super quiet right now. I'm loving it. 
I don't even want to talk. The only sound I hear is my computer fan. <laughs> Very pleasant. It's almost like the power went off or something. I was reading that the toucan is a symbol of confidence, mainly because well, they say that because they're so loud, they're so vocal and chatty, that they're super confident. So if you believe in, you know, totems or animal spirit guides, and if you're visited by a toucan or if you see toucans, then you know that's a symbol of confidence and that maybe you need to be more vocal or maybe you need to be more confident. All right, now what I'm gonna do is take my liner brush, it's a number four liner brush, and I'm gonna put it into the, the black, because I need a thin line here, just for underneath. Right there. And there's a little spot there that was black, and I wanna make the edge of the beak come out a little sharper because they do have a sharp edge to their beak. I need a little more water and paint there. Just taking a look at the reference photo here. and It does come out sharp down there. I don't like that stark white though. I want it to be, not sure, let me see. I'm playing around here a little bit. I've got my number two brush and I'm, I'm gonna put that into my white color and see if maybe adding a little bit of white paint will make it look a little less like a cartoon. Well, I don't really care if it looks like a cartoon. <laughs> We're just supposed to be having fun here. I'm not looking for realism. I have to keep reminding myself of that, you know? A little bit of brown might be nice. I just don't want to get any black in there. I'm just wetting my brush, putting it back into the white. Going around here. I might wait to fill the rest in until the black is completely dry. So what I'm going to do is take my liner brush and some black and I'm going to kind of give him some feathers or what might seem to be feathers. is uh, the top of his head. And this is random. I want this to be random looking. I don't want it to look like I'm drawing. I'm painting straight lines, you know. I'm just dipping my brush once in a while into water, back into that black paint. heater just went on so my silence is gone. <laughs> it's just very rare when you have a house full of pets and especially it's the weekend here. There's people up at their at their weekend houses. I live in cottage country sort of I guess. I live in the mountains and people come up on the weekends. So 
So yeah, it's rare for it to be so quiet, especially when the pets are up and about. But they're all sleeping. All right, he's got a little hairy head there. And for his body here, I'm just gonna take some black. I don't know if this is gonna do anything. I'm just gonna put a few little round sort of semicircles like this. I don't want him to look too solid, you know? Like I said, I don't know if that's going to show up or not. But this is so relaxing. Hope you guys are enjoying this. And I'd love to know if you try, you know, some of my, my lessons. Moving his chest out a little there because it comes out a little in the photo. I started my YouTube channel here on Rain Francis Art, oh boy, over a year ago. And um, I thought it would be a little more active. <laughs> I do have some wonderful people who, who are so supportive and they follow me and thank you, my friends. I love you. <laughs> but I really thought, especially during the COVID stuff, I thought people would get more into, you know, doing art at home. And at first I started these, this channel with a lot of time-lapse stuff. But then I thought, you know what? I learned by doing full lessons. So I want to do full lessons too for people. I'm going to fill this in because now that I'm looking, the little white spot isn't as big as I thought it was. There. Okay. Now I'm not done with the beak. But that's drying. All the black is drying. So I'm going to, I wiped off my liner brush and I'm going to go into that darker orange. Remember, I was doing yellowy orange, then regular orange, and darker orange. So, I've got that darker orange on my liner brush. And I want to make the opening of the beak a little more obvious. There we go. Just a little more obvious. And I'm using that same darker orange for the top here. And it kind of comes down like that. Right? And I'm going to do the same thing under the beak. Hmm, I just noticed something I have to fix. Hold on. This comes out sharp too. There. I'm just gonna grab my number two brush and use a little black paint. I have to put this, uh, it's a little lower here, this black area. There. That's more like it. I find two cans are kind of funny looking. <laughs> a little funny looking. If you've ever seen the movie Fargo, that's what I'm doing. Funny looking. He was a little funny looking. The little one. <laughs> right, number two brush is back into the black, and I want to make this a little darker. They have these huge beaks, and they're not big birds either, you know? It's, it's a wonder they don't fall over. 
And I'm going to put some more black into the, the top area here. Just make it a little darker. There we go. Now I've got my number four brush. The only reason I'm using that one is because it's the clean one. I'm putting that back into the white. I'm going to try to fill in the chest area or the under chin area here with a little more white. Just so that it's not you know, stark white, the color of the, the page. I got a little bit of black in there, so I'm going to try to wipe that out. And I'm going to kind of try to erase that black line that I did. I want it to show up a little bit, but not as dark as that. I'm going to try to pull some of that off. It's quite dark. If I do it this way, let's see. Pull some of that off. It's a little thick for my liking. Slowly but surely, I'm going to pull some of that off. A little bit at a time. There, that's better. I think I got enough off of there. See, I want it, I want it to look a little bit like a dark area so that it separates the under the chin with the page but I didn't want it to be that stark black so I've got that same number four brush and I'm just going to use that yellowy orange again I'm going to put another layer in here just underneath the beak underneath the beak opening. Lost my voice again there for a second. I love those oranges and those yellows. What else can I do? I think I'm gonna grab my liner brush again. Oops. Take all that black off there. Dipping that into that purple color. And I'm going to give the eye a second layer. Because it is quite a, a dark purple. <sighs> Holding my breath again. There we go. A nice dark purple. And maybe I'll just give a second layer to the eyeball or the pupil. I have a bad habit of calling it an eyeball. There. Now let me see, is there anything else I want to do to this little fella? I think I want to extend the black a little bit on his beak. Because there really isn't that much orange at the end. There are some South American tribes that saw the toucan as a messenger between the spirit world and the realm of the living. There's a lot of um, folklore and symbolism attached to animals, you know. I find it absolutely fascinating. There we go. I think his beak is much better that way. Well, what else can I do? I don't want to ruin it. I'm going to take a little bit of white. Just a very little bit. I'm just going to put a few highlights here. And they're transparent, you know. Just to give a little highlighting on his back. 
and maybe a little bit on the back of his head there. All right, I'm pretty happy with this. Shall we pull another Bob Ross card? Let's see what Bob Ross wants to say at the end of the painting. All right, let's see here. <laughs> this would be a good place for my little squirrel to live. <laughs> this would be a good place for my little squirrel to live. He says that when he's drawing um, uh, trees, when he's painting trees. And he was an animal lover too. What a wonderful man. So that's my painting, my friends. If you joined along, I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave me a comment. I love to read them and I do reply to them. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It means the world to me. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're going to have a wonderful day. We'll see you next time on Rain Francis Art. Bye.